Wait, okay, that one. And then this. Uh -huh. And then this. Judy, Judy, stop. I'm, I'm getting overloaded. <laughs> we'll tell you how you can help William lighten his load next on Garden Time. Welcome to Garden Time. We're at Capital Subaru on the Parkway in Salem for Subaru Garden Days, which is happening today from 11 to 3. And all of the stuff I'm holding is just a mere selection of the things that you can win or can take home with you. In fact, there's so many vendors out here that you can choose to buy wonderful things from, and there's also free food. And cider tastings. And your kids can come out, plant some seedlings to take home with them. Also, coming up in the show today, we'll take you to Lebanon where we're touring a healing garden. And we're going to give you the steps on how you can build your own greenhouse. But first, some pollinator-friendly plants. So I'm standing in front of some beautiful flowers. I'm here with Ellen from Egan Gardens, and we are going to talk about something that I know occurs, but I had never considered it until this conversation we're going to have, annuals that pollinate. So. Tell me about this and why do you think I didn't think of it? <laughs> well, the main reason is that these days annuals don't get no respect. Right. And it's not fair. Perennials are all cool. Everybody's even getting tired of them just putting in shrubs. Well, perennials and shrubs and trees are all great bee supporters. Right. And when we speak of pollinators, it's really the bees we're worried about. They've got the problems with the varroa mites killing them off and all that. Right. So we got to at least give them as much food as we can. Now, shrubs bloom in the spring and for about three weeks and they're done. Yeah. Perennials will have their bloom time and they're breeding them for longer bloom times, but you know, it's anywhere from three to six weeks on most of them. Right, correct. And then there are the annuals and they bloom all the time because annuals are programmed by nature to continuously bloom so they can set seed and make new babies for next year because they know that their life is done. Right. So they are just blooming the whole time. So in between all your perennials and shrubs, here are the annuals blooming continuously. Even just a planter or a hanging basket can right. attract bees. I was looking at a hanging basket yesterday and there were bees all right. over the lobelias and bacopas. So you don't have to just have a place for your annuals. You can pop them in between your perennials. A lot of the annuals kind of look like perennials for those who say, That's I right. don't like annuals. They just look like little cookie cutter things. Yeah. Things like the Nicotiana. Stunning. Yeah, they're, they'll get up taller than this. They bloom clear on into the fall. The bees love them. The hummingbirds come around to visit them. They smell good at night and they just blend right in with your phloxes and your Shasta daisies and all those things. And I have to say, I love heliotrope because not only does it pollinate, it butterflies love it. They love to land on that. Yep. Everybody loves heliotrope. It smells so good. Yes. Yeah. Mm, it's divine. <laughs> so we love it. They love it. God love it. Yeah. And then what is the beautiful red here? Is that a verbena of some sort? That is a verbena. There are the seed grown upright verbenas cheap and easy. There are the trailing verbenas that are a little fancier. Both of them attract bees and hummingbirds. And radical bloomers. I oh. mean, they just bloom. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they do. Um, That's beautiful even the too. little blue lobelias. Uh, hummingbirds go for these, but yeah, I've seen the bees all over them too. This little guy is a Nemesia Karoo dark blue related to snapdragons. Snapdragons are great for the bees. Right, yeah. Yeah. When I was a kid, I used to like trap them inside so mean. <laughs> anyway. It was the dark side of Ellen, but we love you anyway. <laughs> yes. uh, bee sadism. Uh, and, and then of course zinnias produce a lot of pollen. The butterflies love them. The bees love them. And, uh, uh, I, lo I love them. Yeah. And then, of course, these are a yeah, wonder. Yeah, the salvias. Everybody talks about the perennial salvias being great for bees, and they are. Yeah. But, you know, not everybody has room for a hot lips that gets that it's true. big. Yeah. And so if you just need a splash of red and something for the bees, then... And that'll take you through up until fall anyway. Oh, and yeah. then the bees tend to kind of wander away and hide yeah, for a while. So yeah. that's perfect. 
Well, and you also have an upcoming event, I believe on the 9th, of a, of a class mm -hmm. on pollination itself, right? Yeah, so I'll talk about plants, I'll talk about growing techniques, uh, planting techniques to be the best for the bees, right. and anything anybody has questions about. Well, you know, it's always so much fun to come out here and see all the beautiful color and the plants that you can buy. So if you are thinking to yourself, I would like to learn more about pollination and how I can make it work in my own garden, go to Gardentime.tv. We'll click over their website. You can call in, sign up, and make sure that you're here on Saturday the 9th, I believe, right? At 2 p.m. Perfect. Thank yeah. you, Ellen. Thank you. a beautiful home inside and out at French Prairie Perennials. Inside we have just the right creative elements to complete your decor. We offer an oasis of unusual nature inspired garden and home gifts and accessories. Outside choose from our wide selection of unique dwarf conifers and sparkling companion plants. French Prairie Perennials located between Woodburn and Wilsonville. Take exit 278 to Aurora and French Prairie Perennials. DRAM is celebrating 75 years of design and manufacturing of quality watering tools. DRAM products feature nine water patterns and are designed to nurture your plants with a shower of rain. DRAM for lawn and garden, available at garden centers near you. Create a beautiful living space both inside and out with the help of Terra Casa. Outside, you'll find pottery, fountains, and decor to make your garden unforgettable. And inside, there are home furnishings and just the right accents to make your home warm, inviting, and most importantly, comfortable. Terracasa has a huge selection of merchandise to fit any home or budget. Plus, we still have all the unique and distinctive gifts that you have come to expect from Terracasa. Terracasa in downtown Damascus. Subaru Garden Days returns to Capital Subaru in Salem. Join us for a day of food, fun, and garden excitement. Select garden vendors join William and Judy on the parkway from 11 to 3. At Subaru Garden Days, June 2nd at Capital Subaru. Your way on the parkway. So I'm standing here with Dave of Petal Heads, and you're going to be at Subaru Garden Days. Indeed. And so we're going to be talking about some of the great plants that you're bringing in. So let's start down here at these beauties and just work our way out. All right. So this is like one of the coolest plants that is relatively new from the Proved Winners line. It's a Baptisia. It's called Sparkling Sapphires, and it's like when the, wow. I saw this when it was first uh, being trialed at Michigan. And it was it, like the first time you ever saw Star Wars and you saw <laughs> like the uh, Millennium Falcon go into hyperspace. You're uh -huh. like, wow! <laughs> and so that's like, that was sort of my reaction with this plant and this whole line of uh, the decadent uh, series of Baptisia. So incredibly easy to grow. It's native to like a native environment, or native to a native, native to a more of a prairie environment. Right, so right. Requires very little water, and they're all they're all beautiful. They have several colors, but this you're right. This color is wow. <laughs> this is the one that really drew us, and so this is actually the, the only one that we grow in this uh, particular series. Cool, cool. What else we got? Oh gosh, so uh, let's talk about abutilons. So this is uh, not there are not a lot of growers that grow these abutilons. So this is a flowering Swedish maple, but it's not of the maple family. It just has the maple appearance and has these incredible flowers. And so it starts to flower this time of the year and then will continue to flower well into fall. And they happen to do like particularly well up here in Oregon. And so we've had these planted unprotected in wine barrels and they've survived for six winters. So yeah. a nice uh, semi-perennial, uh, if we get like a, sort of an anomaly winter, it might be a little difficult. Uh, I've had them die to the ground, but then come back yeah. from the roots too. So, so the <laughs> trick is to actually, uh, when they start to defoliate, they'll let you know when they want to go to bed. And so like, uh, basically leave a foot because there will still be quite a bit of nutrition in the stem. And then uh, they should uh, come back every year. Yeah, yeah they're, they're so worthy of, of some attention in a garden because they're beautiful. I love foliage, yes. falling in love with foliage. Tell me about this one. This is super cool without a bloom even. So uh, this is Nadia Thunder and Lightning. So variegated foliage in full sun. And that is very, very rare to it, find yes. something that can handle that. So again, very little maintenance. In fact, all the plants that we grow are best grown with neglect. Um, and so you can kind of torture these a little bit and they'll let you know when they need to, you need to chuck a little bit of water at them. And they're just coming into flowers. Wow. So look at the contrast wow. of that. 
this is like an electric magenta bloom and it will st totally pr prolifically bloom. And I'm, I've heard there's like reports of NASA seeing these from outer space because it's so bright. <laughs> And that's not true. Well, no, I would, I would probably not bank that it was, but still, they're a beautiful plant yeah, I mean, on whatever let's, planet let's, you dwell let's on. Let's just go with it. <laughs> let's talk about this beauty. Okay, so this is an improvement uh, of a variety that uh, Terra Nova grew called Delta Dawn. And so they, what they did is they, they incorporated quite a bit more velosa in it. And so these leaves will be the size of dinner plates. And wow. you have this radical... Um, the nation and so here we are it's uh, late spring when with Delta Dawn they tend to uh, have more of a foliage where there's there's really isn't like a defined venation whereas this one has venation all year round it's just a radical improvement new breeding from Terra Nova and the leaves can get super big on yeah, this. So, I mean already like, that's a big yeah so leaf. <laughs> dinner plate uh, they don't require any fertilizer super easy to grow again grow that with neglect and you'll be just dazzled can handle uh, quite a bit of sun, but as much shade as you can give it. Right, lovely, lovely. And let's talk about this beauty. So this is kind of a funny thing. So some people call it a gastiki, some people call it agastache, some people call it a hummingbird mint, and as far as I'm concerned, as long as- As long as you know what we're talking about. <laughs> whatever you say with the distinction is correct. Yeah. And so uh, this is some of the best breeding that Terra Nova has ever done. And so the goal was to create on, uh, to have major crown count, uh, so what that means is that there will be more roots, which leads to more stems, which means to more flowers, just a healthier plant. And they wanted to keep these nice and dwarf because some of the older varieties- They get pretty leggy and stringy. Leggy yeah. and then they flop. This is a nice, uh, cool variety. This one happens to be, uh, this is a ambrosia. So it's, it's a bicolor. And then we have a mandarin one, which is like a bright, bright orange, yeah. which is a really cool one Lovely. too. And then this, of course, I recognize this one and it's been around a while, but so worthy of attention still. So one of the cool things about the Brunneras is, is that I call it, it's, it's deer kryptonite because it really like, if you plant them around plants like roses, I've, I've literally had uh, clients who I've designed gardens for that have embraced me because they hadn't seen their roses in years. <laughs> and uh, so I, we use this for deer defense. You can divide them uh, and it's just a really cool, awesome radical uh, mirror shaped silver foliage plant as well that does well in the shade. It can handle a little bit of sun as well. Throws. And even if you don't have deer, still a right. stunning plant to have in your garden. Garden or containers, it does really well too. It's a very social plant. Okay, Dave, t tell me about this one, because this looks spacey to me. Oh, totally. No, absolutely. It looks like it's from outer space. So this is Leonotus. This is the lion's tail. Uh, look how w wonderfully it contrasts with the wow, Baptisia. Right. Perfect to combine with that. Again, very drought tolerant as well. It's just a super, super cool uh, semi-perennial. Should do perfectly fine in Oregon. What you see here, uh, this is like a bee magnet too. So we have a lot of pollinators, which is very important. So to, just to go along with like the Star Wars theme, it's sort of like an de <laughs> a orange Death Star. And you'll see it's just getting to flower here and it'll flower and there will be several of them. And they do, here. this isn't the end of, they, the whole, Death Star is eventually surrounded by blooms, right? Absolutely. <laughs> Perfect. Absolutely. So Dave, you, you have one really true annual that you're going to be selling today. Tell us about that one. Okay, so this is an annual. It is a, but it's a super annual. This is actually like a super tomato. It's uh, a part of the Mighty Tomato line. So what's cool about these is that they're grafted onto a rootstock that absorbs so much nutrition that it doesn't get any of the foliar uh, diseases, uh, avoids nematodes, and it produces 40 uh, to 50% more fruit than wow. any other. And so they're heirloom varieties. This one happens to be brandy wine. So it's already flowering up. So tomatoes will be in your near future. So uh, that's a really cool line that was developed here in Oregon. Right, so right. Wonderful. always got to support the local. Well, there you have it. Now, if any of these plants intrigue you and you go, I don't have that in my garden yet, but I want to, you know where you can find it right out at Subaru Garden Days. Thank you so much, Dave. Thank you. Over the 30 years that our family has been in the nursery industry, we've learned that anyone can supply a customer with plants and garden supplies. But it's supplying those plants and supplies backed by a knowledgeable staff that can transform a garden and take it from ordinary to extraordinary. That's what we do at Sagawa Nursery. Why be ordinary when you can be extraordinary? Sagawa Nursery, growing beyond the ordinary. Since 1982, The Wall has been making local gardens beautiful, naturally. 
Whether you need a new wall, concrete patio, fire pit, or driveway, the wall's expert craftsmen can build it. We back up our work with a five-year warranty so you'll know it'll last. We use the highest quality materials, including stamped colored concrete, natural stone, and we're the leader in using recycled concrete. Create an outdoor environment you'll enjoy for years with the help of your friends at The Wall. Are you searching for fun and refreshment? Then look no further than Brew Camp at the Oregon Garden. The best party of the summer features over 40 breweries and over 80 craft beers and ciders. Where else can you experience three days of craft beer and wine tasting while camping under the stars? Party with an amazing bunch of bands, surrounded by a glorious 80-acre botanical garden. For more information and to book your camp spot, go to brewcampfest.com. Welcome to Blooming Junction, where it's easy to connect with nature. At Blooming Junction, you'll find beautiful, healthy plants, good, fresh food, and a place to regain peace and calm in your life. We have an unsurpassed collection of unique and distinctive plants and the expertise to help any gardener be successful. And we feature Blooming Advantage plants. Come check out Blooming Junction for an inspiring experience in the garden or in the kitchen. Blooming Junction, offering quality plants for beautiful gardens. Two stages, 25 shows, one sweet weekend. It's the 26th annual Oregon Jamboree presented by Boulder Falls Inn, starring Brent Eldridge, Brantley Gilbert, Marin Morris, Low Cash, Jared Neiman, and Diamond Rhea. The Oregon Jamboree happening August 3rd through the 5th. Tickets and camping on sale now at OregonJamboree.com. Well, it is a great day because I am in Salem right now at Capital Subaru, and we are going to be celebrating Subaru Garden Days. Tell me about it, Brian. Well, hey, welcome everybody to Capital Subaru. We're having our perennial event, perennial Subaru event. Garden Days. I got Days. what you did there. Did you get it? <laughs> We've got Cappy the Bear here. We're going to be giving out plants all day long. We've got cider tasting with Bauman Farms. We've got all kinds of fun events for everybody, so come on down and see us just off the parkway. And I'm going to ask Skip over here, tell me a little bit more about the things that people can get, Absolutely. really just with a drawing. Perfect. <laughs> so I'm awkwardly holding a couple implements. <laughs> that we're gonna be giving away randomly throughout the day. You can also sign up to win every half an hour, $25. And at the end of the day, we're giving away $100. Wow, wow. And Judy, what, what are you doing there? Uh, we have a kid's craft. They're gonna be able to plant wildflower seeds or sweet pea seeds and take them home for their own garden. Wonderful. So, you know, every year we come out here for this event, it's always a blast. We have a great time and it's always fun watching people find Subarus as oh, well. We <laughs> so for more information, go to gardentime.tv. We'll click you over to their website, find the times when you can get here. Come on out and enjoy the day with us. Well, I am with one of the artists that will be at Subaru Garden Days today, and I'm with Marilyn Russell, who you're actually a metal artist. Mm -hmm. Very cool. So can you kind of tell us how you got started in that career? Because it is a, a great story and an interesting journey. Certainly, certainly. Um, I've always been a seamstress and successful with it and um, I lived in the Olympia area for quite some time and there was a class coming up. It was a five-week class with an artist that was in the Seattle area and I said, I want to do this. And so I went to the class and like I said, it was only five weeks long. In the first class, he went through all of our ideas and then each idea he would say where to go to get metal, get copper, get this, get that. and it, I just got inspired and by the time I was done with class I had a whole new idea of what I was doing and I created a little scare girl, scare girl is what I called mm -hmm. her. She had doorknobs for knees and then my daughter said there was an art show going on in town and so I, in Olympia, so I entered the piece and she got third place. And she sold, oh. so I went, I'm on to something. Ah, and I could see we're surrounded by people and animals, so really, where do you get your other inspiration then as you go forward? It, it will be, you know, like an inspiration, like uh, I made a peace man, and um, his mouth was actually in the dirt, and I went, ah, this is a mouth. <laughs> and so a lot of times the pieces will come from the just a little piece that I'll see. And I have friends that would love to bring me all kinds of metal, <laughs> and I have to have 
actually say no because I have no room here <laughs> to do that. So it just comes to me or if I see a little something in a magazine and then and I'll go from there. Uh, well, I see cats, I see dogs, mm -hmm. I see people, I see a boy with a balloon. Uh -huh. So really, it's across the gamut of, yes. of items. Yes. But then you do little pieces like mm -hmm. these hearts, which are so sweet. Thank you. Do you want to know the story about that? Okay. Okay. You're a good storyteller. Um, <laughs> <laughs> these were an inspiration to me some years ago. In um, I'd seen a drawing and I went, oh, I want to make them. And then I turned them into magnets. And I actually sold them at Starbucks for Valentine's Day. And then a, a nun came in to the um, Starbucks and she was teaching a class or classes. And so she ended up ordering so many of them from me that I could pay my rent. <laughs> well, I was going to school. It was perfect. <laughs> perfect option to take care of my rent as well as make me smile as, with each piece I made. That so. is wonderful. Yeah. Well, it'll be so much fun to have her at Subaru Garden Days. Stop by the booth and talk to her. You'll hear stories and you can meet her and see all her beautiful artwork. Well, thanks so much. Thank you. Garden Time is brought to you by Capital Subaru. Your way on the parkway. I've been a Capital Subaru customer for 15 years and one of the main reasons is because they treat me well and I want to shop local. The service department is excellent and I always feel like I'm taken care of here. In fact, they call me now even after I've driven off the lot to remind me to come in and get my car washed. That service. One of the reasons why I like coming to Capital Subaru, actually, they have this the dog area and I can just walk my dog around the whole area and we can enjoy the outside. I got it my way on the parkway. Since 1926, Bonide has worked with homeowners to make their homes and gardens beautiful. If you have a garden problem, Bonide has the answer. Worried about mosquitoes ruining your barbecue? With Mosquito Beater from Bonide, your worries are over. The Mosquito Beater products kill all stages of the mosquito life cycle. Protect your family and enjoy your summer with Mosquito Beater. Visit Bonide.com to find a local retailer and to download your free Bonide Problem Solver app for your iPhone or Droid. Your center for home and garden decor, Garden Gallery Ironworks has everything you need to make your home a showcase. For the inside, we have a great selection of Kelly Ray Roberts items, and our farmhouse style department is full of one-of-a-kind gifts. For the outside, we have arbors, trellises, planting beds, and garden decor, everything to make your neighbors jealous. Check out our new website, and then come visit us in Hubbard, Garden Gallery Ironworks. A vintage flea returns to Margie's Farm and Garden for our summer market. Browse over 50 vendors with all things vintage, antique, repurposed, and handmade. Enjoy food vendors, product demonstrations, and hands-on crafts. You can also take home a beautiful plant, basket, or planter from Margie's huge selection. Shop all day from 9 to 5 with free admission. Check out our Facebook page or website for all the details. That's a vintage flea at Margie's Farm and Garden. We'll see you there. Well, I am at the beautiful French Prairie Gardens, and I'm here with Katie. And Katie, today we are going to be talking about this wonderful annual event, Berries, Brews, and Barbecues. Tell me what's happening this year. Yeah, so it is all that trifecta. So we have berries, so strawberries right now. We have over 12 different varieties where people can come on out, take a tractor wagon ride out, get a U-Pick bucket, pick their berries, take them home, and do whatever they want to do with those. Wonderful. Uh, we have lots of kids' activities, including that tractor wagon ride, slides, optical course, farm animals, lots of fun. And of course, for the adults, we do have our brews Wonderful. and cider portion. Yeah. We have over 20 different breweries and cideries participating this year. And one of my favorites here is a Hot Valley Citrus Mistress and your dark variety over there is from Sun River Brewing called Delicious. St. Patty's <laughs> Irish Stout. And then you, the barbecues are just as wonderful they, as the brew. They are, berries. they are. <laughs> we have our pulled pork sandwiches where we smoke our pork butts all night. We're oh, doing pit so chicken good. on the spot here so you can smell it cooking. Uh, we have a, a farmer's fry too, so we have all those kind of curly fries, onion rings, and then wonderful. we have an awesome barbecue plate that has tri-tip and ribs wow. and so many sides. And of course, strawberry shortcake for dessert or a strawberry brownie or strawberry covered donuts wow. and of course milkshakes and smoothies galore so lots to 
to come and, and see and eat here. you still have beautiful plants and hanging baskets. We do, we do. <laughs> we have lots of color spots and baskets so you can kind of come, fill up, have fun and bring home a beautiful plant to remember us. And so Katie, is it just this weekend? No, it's this weekend and the next two weekends. Wow. So the first three weekends in June, so Saturday and Sunday, nine to six on Saturday, 10 to six on Sunday. So Katie, how do people find out information about what's going on? Yeah, they can just go to our website, fpgardens.com and on our uh, homepage, you can click to various brews and barbecues. It says all the pricing for uh, the event, all the brews and ciders, and also live music. We have live music from really? 10 to 6 every day at wow. the festival. And they can find out the, the bands that are playing there. Yep, right well. online. Uh huh. Wonderful. Well, there you have it. If you've never been out here, you really should. It's a wonderful event. Go to gardentime.tv. We'll pick you over to their website, gather that information, and head on out. Thank you so much. Thank you. Cheers, Cheers. William. I'm with Diane from Wabra Farms, who's one of our vendors here at Subaru Garden Days. And so, Diane, you always have beautiful baskets and lots of color, so I know that you're going to have baskets here today. <laughs> We're going to have lots of different baskets today. So this is one of our larger baskets. This is the 16-inch. We're also going to have some smaller baskets for the home gardeners who only want about 12-inch basket with lots of different colors. And I see that you have sun ones and for shade, so really something for all kind of we situations. Are. So we'll have some gorgeous sun baskets, we'll also have some mixed shade baskets, we'll have some fuchsia baskets as well. Oh, wonderful. And so I know that I love petunias, and so, but some people don't because they think they have to pick off all the dead blooms, but I don't really see too many dead blooms, so what's the secret? Well, this is a great variety, and a lot of our baskets are made with hybrid plants. And so this one here, you just want to make sure that you water daily and you're going to want to fertilize at least twice a week and it just keeps sending new growth out of the top oh. and the dead blooms just kind of end up at the bottom. You really don't have to pick it. That's so, nice. Yeah, so you can kind of sit back and enjoy your summer and the beauty of your flowers. <laughs> oh, really? Sit down and sit really enjoy down your garden? and really enjoy, <laughs> yes. And I know that you're going to have other flowers there, not just baskets, so let's go the other and see those. Perfect. Great. Thanks. Now I see that you have fuchsia baskets too. So are those a little bit um, different care than other baskets? They are. On the fuchsia baskets, you still need to water. Morning is best. Let them go to bed dry at night. And then after the fuchsia blooms, it's going to put on like a little berry. And you just want to make sure that you pull those off and dispose of those. Um, it just keeps the fuchsia blooming and looking much healthier. Uh, and then fertilizer, how about, talk about that again? So on fertilizer on fuchsias, you really only want to do about once a week on your fuchsia basket. Okay. Otherwise, it just pushes too much foliage and not enough blooms. Petunia baskets, you want to do twice a week. They are heavy feeders, so a little bit different watering on those. Oh, excellent. And so not only will you have baskets, but you're going to have other container kind of plants because it's not too late to do containers. It's not. We've got a lot of people that are wanting some stuff for their yards before graduations oh, sure. and for holidays and barbecues coming up. So we're going to bring in some four inch product as well. All right. So we're going to bring in some great looking begonias this year. Beautiful. Um, and so the fun thing about the begonias that we carry is they will either go full sun or full shade. Whoa. So that way really you can mix them in with your million bells, you can do a shade basket with them, kind of whatever you want. Um, we also are going to bring some of our fabulous coleus this year. Cool. We've got our alligator tears, we've got our French quarter, and we've got our red head. Wow. So all those would add some fabulous color to the landscape as well, either in a pot or in the ground. And it's nice not having to worry, oh, am I putting it in the shade? Am I putting it in the sun? Where is the sun? Where is the shade? Exactly. Make it easy. And everything I've shown you so far is really low maintenance. You don't have to do anything but water. Nice. I mean, we're all about low maintenance this summer. <laughs> of course. We want to enjoy our time with our family. So this is one of our favorites. That's so fun. It is called firecracker. It looks like teeny tiny mice. <laughs> um, it likes full sun. It likes to be hot and dry. So it's one of those plants that you put in. It also attracts hummingbirds as well. Nice, nice. And then you need some crawlers, some kind of cascade. You always need something to fill out of a pot. And with the two different Lickashiamas, the Creeping Jennies, it now comes in a chocolate color and the traditional gold as always. Beautiful. It blends really well with any of That's the nice. coleus. It'll blend with begonias. It mixes in very well with a lot of things. And you can't forget the little Million Bell Petunias, the miniatures. This is a favorite of a lot of our customers just because you don't have to deadhead. Oh, nice. There's Again. no picking at these. Perfect. They look great in the flower bed. They're great in a basket. You can do a container pot super easy with a spike. Um, we also like our petunias. This is Pink Sky. 
It's going to trail a little bit, but it's another one of those you really don't have to pick at. Won't, so. Wonderful. I love that. Yes. And then uh, some impatience. Oh, and we're known for our sun impatience. We absolutely love these. Sun these are two of our favorite colors. Nice. So these are one of those plants that if you're not quite sure if it's a sunny spot or a shady spot, these will do both. So if your front porch or your flower bed, a part of it's sun, part of it's shade, you can put these throughout the whole thing and get that blended color all the way through. Uh -huh. Well, you've heard all about this lovely color. You have to come out to Subaru Garden Days today and you can come and see Diane and get some beautiful plants. Thanks so much. Thank you. Garden Time is brought to you by Portland Nursery. A passion for plants, a nursery for plant people. Do you want to be green? Do the easy stuff first. Hi, I'm Sarah from Portland Nursery. The U.S. House Energy and Commerce Committee says for every dollar spent on a shade tree, you can save five dollars on cooling, blocking the penetrating heat in the summer and allowing the warm rays through in the winter. Dollar for dollar, there's no better energy and money saver than a good, deciduous shade tree. Portland Nursery's professionals can help you make the perfect selection. Portland Nursery, a passion for plants, a nursery for plant people. When you plant your flower baskets and containers this year, consider Black Gold All-Purpose Potting Mix for the best results. This worm castings enriched, well-drained potting soil has a controlled release fertilizer to feed your plants up to six months. Black Gold All-Purpose Potting Mix now contains resilience for enhanced plant growth. Available at garden centers everywhere. For more information, visit blackgold.bz all the riches of the earth. Join us for Berries, Brews, and Barbecue, now happening three weekends in June, featuring Oregon Craft Ciders and Brews and Barbecue. Enjoy barbecue. You pick strawberries, hay rides, live music, and much, much more. It's farm fun for the whole family at French Prairie Gardens. DRAM is celebrating 75 years of design and manufacturing of quality watering tools. DRAM products feature nine water patterns and are designed to nurture your plants with a shower of rain. DRAM for lawn and garden, available at garden centers near you. It's a beautiful morning to be in a garden and this is a very special garden in Lebanon and I'm with Christy and Christy, what is, where are we? We're at the Samaritan Lebanon Community Hospital Garden. And it is so nice because it's really open to everyone here at the hospital and the community. It is. And so what can we do here? What, what do people use this for? Well, the garden was designed by Hiwichi Karusu and it was a healing garden. It's a healing garden, his first healing garden. Mm. And he wants people to come out here and just wander through, enjoy nature, use all your senses, sense of smell, uh, the vegetation, um, the touch, to touch the uh, benches and the stones, the um, gazebos, and just de-stress. Ah, that is nice. And then do also, do the staff come out here with patients to use it too? Yes, he's actually designed it so a wheelchair ivy pole can be wheeled up through the, the winding paths. And I bet that um, patients and their families come out here and really that is a nice time to be together during such a stressful time. Yes, it is. We had one incident where the um, emergency room coordinator sent his employees out here one at a time after a real traumatic event where they could just wander around and de-stress and it really helped them to be able to continue on for the day with their job. That is so helpful. And it looks like such a just well-established garden. Is it very old? It actually, we began building in June of 2004 and we were done by November uh, 2004. Wow. So uh, Huichi's signature is to have the garden look like it's been here for several years. And so did the hospital take care of all that or more of a community event? Uh, Huichi actually personally places all his large trees and uh, large uh, stones. He not only says put it there, he says tip it this way, <laughs> lean it that way. And um, so he and his crew built the entire garden. Uh, and then it's all funded through the hospital? The hospital foundation, mm -hmm. Lebanon Community Hospital Foundation, um, funded all three of Huichi's gardens here in, in Lebanon. Ah, and so the other ones are right across the street. We were there last year yes. at the college. Yes. Or I'm sorry, at the Boulder Inn. Yes. So the designer is really a world-renowned Japanese-style garden, garden-style designer. So Lebanon is a pretty small town. Does he live here? Does he know someone? He actually lives in Portland, his business is in Portland, but he went to college with uh, Bill Rao, our past president. And they actually, uh, Bill went out to Chicago to see one of Huichi's gardens, 
and they started dreaming about putting one here in Lebanon. And that's the only reason we have it here, because he is world renowned. He has gardens all over the world, and uh, he's very famous. If you Google him, he's very <laughs> famous. He's a wonderful, very kind man. Oh, I've heard so much about him when we interviewed Mr. Ra last year. So really incredible that he is actually going to be here in Lebanon at an event that's coming up. I'm going to be talking with the coordinators of the event and see how you, too, can come and meet this man. And now I'm going to be talking about the people that are hosting this huge event where the designer of this garden is going to be speaking. And I'm with Trudy. And so, Trudy, what is the big event going on? Well, it's our 91st State of Oregon Convention for Garden Clubs. Wow. And so this is going on all weekend. And then he is like a keynote speaker. Yes, he will be our keynote speaker on Tuesday the 12th in the evening. And that is open to non-members. It's the first time we've ever opened any speaker, anything we do at convention to non-members. That is so cool. And what else will be going on? Well, people come in Sunday before the convention even starts, and we're going to take a San Yam train brunch. <laughs> um, and then Monday, everybody comes in and sets things up, because there's workshops, there's tours, there's so much wow. going on along with the business. We always have to fit the business in. <laughs> yeah, so it, there's there's things happening for the members uh, clear through till Wednesday night. You wow. go home tired. Wow. Well, gardeners yes. love to be busy. Yes, yes, we do. <laughs> And then who's exactly sponsoring all this? Well, this year, the San Am District of Garden Clubs, which encompasses um, about 10 clubs from Alsi to Sweet Home to Albany here in Lebanon, we are the hosts for this year. Uh, and to hear more about this whole big district, I'm gonna be talking to Jolie. And so tell us about this organization. It's incredible. Well, Oregon Federation of Garden Clubs is a statewide uh, organization. We have uh, 15 districts, uh, in Hun there's hundreds of members oh, yeah. and uh, we just do all kinds of good gardening things we have uh, we donate to uh, organizations that have to do with gardening and I'd like to mention one of our main donations is the Claire Hanley scholarship fund and that is for students taking uh, agricultural classes at OSU and then donations. the money's too from this um, speaking engagement is going to be going back into the healing garden too. it is the money that we make from this uh, from Hoichi's visit. It's going to be donated to the Lebanon Hospital Foundation. And you not only fundraising, but you do so much in the community. So tell us a little bit about that. Well, one thing that our Lebanon Garden Club does, we're partnering right now with the Master Gardeners, and we have a monthly uh, Master Garden program. It's free to the public. It's called the Second Mondays. And it's uh, at lunchtime, so if you're working, you can come during your lunchtime and, and listen to some master gardeners talk about any kind of gardening subjects. And uh, Trudy and I give programs, and the master gardeners give programs. And then one of our uh, Lebanon Garden Club's projects is the maintaining the rose garden in Ralston Park, and we've been doing that since 2000. We wow. took an old rose garden that was totally in disrepair, and it's just gorgeous it now. It's many, many years of hard, hard work. It sounds like you guys are so very active. And so if you want to be a part of this wonderful event happening, or you want to learn about a garden club near you, please go to Garden Time. We'll click you over to the websites, and you can have a wonderful time being out here in Lebanon. Thanks so much, ladies. Have a great event. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Thank you. No matter what shade your green thumb is, you can find the plants and the help you need at Wavra Farms. We're filled with an astounding array of colorful plants to fill your garden. In addition to wonderful annuals and perennials, we are known for our hanging baskets. We also have all your garden essentials and we have great garden gifts too. From beginner to expert, you'll find something new and different with every visit. Wavra Farms, located off Highway 22, exit 5, east of Salem. Join us for Berries, Brews, and Barbecue, now happening three weekends in June, featuring Oregon Craft Ciders and Brews and Barbecue. Enjoy barbecue. You pick strawberries, hay rides, live music, and much, much more. It's farm fun for the whole family at French Prairie Gardens. The health and beauty of your garden starts from the ground up, and healthy soils begin at Grimm's Fuel. For the best in garden mulch, blended soils, and bark dust, choose Grimm's. U-Haul delivered or installed, Grimm's can do it. And if you're looking for a new lawn, Grimm's can do that too with our special lawn installation service. Grimm's is also the area's largest recycler of yard debris. The foundation for a healthy garden begins at Grimm's Fuel. 
In the summer months, water use can double or triple due to outdoor watering. Here are three simple tips to help save water and money this summer. Set your sprinklers so that they're watering your lawn and plants and not the pavement. Water early in the morning or later in the evening when temperatures are cooler. Group plants with similar water, shade, and sun needs together. For more water conservation information and tips, check out the Regional Water Providers Consortium at www.conserveh2o.org. Well, I am sitting inside of the beautiful Terra Casa, and I'm here with Diana. And Diana, we're sitting in a display that's indoors, but we're going to be talking about outdoor furniture because it is that time of year when we're starting to lean toward the outdoors more. Yes. And it would be great to have a, a little patio set outside um, on your patio or in your yard that, that you can leave out year round. And this is a, a really great product. These are 100% um, recycled plastic. Wonderful. And they uh, use stainless steel screws. And they're so good about recycling that even the shavings from the screw holes are used to fill to the fill pillows. Them. Wow, yes. really? Yeah. That's very clever. Yeah. And one of the things I like about it is, is over time, when these first started coming out, they weren't all that grand. Right. But lately, they have really upped their game on the quality and the look and the feel of these things. Well, this is, this is uh, the, the color is infused in it number one it's a very heavy product the Adirondack chairs weigh about 65 pounds a wow. piece so they're not going to blow over they're not going to blow away um, they're made extremely well they're made to not fade um, outside and so they're gonna they're gonna outlive you and I right right <laughs> exactly and then tell me about some of the selections you have like this is a, a higher setting table this is, a pub, this is a pub set, so it's got the pub height table, it's got the swivel um, pub chairs. Um, I did a little mix and match set here to kind of show what it looks like, but outdoors we have the uh, dining room set, we have the Adirondack chairs in both the upright and the regular. We have an Adirondack love seat, we have the new nice. swivel rocker in an Adirondack and the, and the porch rockers and benches and just a wide variety of this. I'm, I'm very big on this product because I don't like to maintain stuff outside. I like it to be kind of me. I'm <laughs> right. lazy that way. Well, so. that was my next question. What, you know, a lot of the stuff with the, with the real wood stuff and then with other things as well, there's a lot of maintenance that goes into exactly. it. How do you take care of these? These are not maintenance free, but they're very, very low maintenance. They may need a wash in the spring uh -huh. with, with a soap and water. And that's really basically it. You don't want to pressure wash it right. because it will ruin the finish on it. Um, because they, they, this has a very nice finish. Yeah, it's smooth, they do. Yeah. Um, it doesn't split, it doesn't scrape you when you sit down, um, but it, it's very, very low maintenance, so. And that's, that's one of the great positive things about it is because, you know, like, like, you know, in the last few months, we've had a lot of pollen falling. Mm -hmm. It's that time of year. And it's really hard on the glass stuff that I have. Yes. I take a SOS oh. pad to it, but oh, this would be coming much tough. easier. Just hosing them off in, yeah. the, in the spring night. I have two um, gray Adirondacks on my, on my front porch, and they sat out all year in the, wow. the snow and the ice, and uh -huh. they, they look brand new. They oh, look wonderful. brand new right now. Well, you know, if you're looking for new furniture and you're thinking, I would like to invest in something that's going to last for a while and easy to take care of, come on out to Terra Casa. Go to Gardentime.tv. We'll click over their website. You can find out how to get here. Thanks, Diana. Thanks, William. Thanks, Barb. Oh, Judy, this Bauman Cider is fantastic. Ah, and you know, everyone can have a chance of tasting a Bauman Cider down here at Subaru Garden Days. And if you don't have a chance to come to Subaru Garden Days, you can go to Bauman Farm anytime. Well, it's a real pleasure to be here with Amber at Par Lumber. And Amber, we're going to be making this really adorable planter box, and it's much easier than people think. Absolutely. I'm this... Actually, this uh, plan came from Garden Time website, nice. so it's available online. And on it's really just a very small amount of materials, too. It really is. Um, it's just two pieces. Two pieces of lumber. It doesn't take barely any time to put together. A couple of tools that make it a little bit faster, um, but you can do these with handheld tools as well. Yeah. So um, we do have, I've already cut and measured out some of the pieces. Um, 45 degree angles uh -huh. is pretty much the only special cut you're going to have. And that's um, really just for the trim on the top. That's really for the trim on the top. And, you know, 
The miter saw makes that super easy. Really easy, yeah. Yeah, exactly. You know, you got your 45 right there. But you can do it with a miter box or, you know, get creative with it. And Amber, what is, what is this piece of wood? So we're looking at cedar, okay. which is a naturally rot resistant wood, great for any kind of garden planter box, anything that's going to have dirt and you know, vegetation up to it. And then this one here, what is this piece? This is cedar as well. This is actually cedar fence board. Okay. Um, this is only a six foot tall piece. Cedar fence boards, as opposed to like a regular tight knot cedar finish board, uh -huh. um, a lot cheaper, a lot less, okay. or I should say a lot less expensive. Less expensive, there we go. Yes, exactly. Well now I do one question before we get started. Mm -hmm. They're different colors. If they're both cedar, what, what has done that? The different colors? Yeah. Really just the way they're milled. Okay. One is also a clear cedar and one is a tight knot cedar, which is this board here. Okay. You'll notice knots in this one. Um, it's harder to get a one by two board um, that's going to get you down in that tight knot price just because of the width yeah. of it. Yeah, I love so, the, the finished product. though. looks mm -hmm. great. It looks like you almost stained and, it to get Yeah, that and honestly, you can stain them so they match closer okay. if, if it bothers you that they're different. But So once you get the, the boards from, from par and you get them laid out, you, you just mark it off do all the measurements, cut them, and then what is our next step after that? Well, we're going to use um, a compressor and a nail gun today with okay. a, um, some finished nails in it. Um, if it's going to be outside, galvanized nails are what's preferred. That's going to hold up over time. Anything that's not galvanized is you know, pretty much going to snap and, and yeah. fall apart out well, in the weather. You know, I can think of no better time than now to get started, so let's get all putting right, this thing together. All right, let's do this. Now, honestly, Amber, this only took us about 10 minutes. We had the stuff cut and all the tools are right here. So if you prepare, it's really a very, very quick project to do. Yeah, even if you were hand nailing them and, and hand sawing it, and it really, maybe 15, 20 yeah. minutes. And, yeah. Um, yeah, the only thing would be left is um, if you're going to put plants in it, obviously you'd want to drill some drainage holes. Which and is easy to do as well. Absolutely. Just a drill bit, poke some holes in the bottom and you're good to go. And like you, like you were talking about before, the two different tones there. Um, it's really nice. Yeah, I, I actually like the difference in the wood tones and, and wood textures too, but if you want it all stained a certain color, obviously apply any kind of exterior stain or paint. Yeah and make it look how you want to for, you know, your... Whatever color you want or whatever yeah. thing you're doing with it. Well, you know, if this is something that interests you, it's great for... It's a family project. It's a fun project. It's a quick project. You can go to gardentime.tv and get the actual instructions on how to do it. And don't forget, run over to Par Lumber to get all the parts you'll need to do that job with. Thank you so much, Amber. Thank you. Subaru Garden Days returns to Capital Subaru in Salem. Join us for a day of food, fun, and garden excitement. Select garden vendors join William and Judy on the parkway from 11 to 3. That's Subaru Garden Days, June 2nd at Capital Subaru. Your way on the parkway. Want to create something extraordinary? Create perfection. Thermidor's lifestyle appliances make it easy. Right now, save up to eighty-five forty-six with our exclusive one-two free event. Try before you buy in our live Thermador kitchens. Oregon-based and family-owned, setting the standard since nineteen forty-seven. Standard TV and appliance. Hi, everybody. I'm Brian Bauman from Bauman's Farm and Garden. I was out on my patio last night, and what do you know? The mosquitoes are already out. So I had the idea of coming into the nursery today and putting together a planter with plants that would repel the mosquitoes. So I picked out some of my favorites. You always, lavender is the number one plant to repel mosquitoes. So we're gonna start with that, probably around the center of our planter. Another great plant to use is marigolds. And the nice thing is, it's gonna add some color to our container and repel the mosquitoes. 
A great plant to have by your back patio is rosemary. Whether you're using it for cooking or just enjoying the fragrance, it'll be great in our container. Basil is also another one, and you can never have too much fresh basil, it seems like. Your cats are gonna love this one. Catnip is also an excellent plant to repel mosquitoes. And of course, one of my favorite smelling plants is the Centronella geranium. And last but not least is lemongrass. So we're gonna try and get all of these into our planter, but first we need to make sure that we have good drainage in the bottom of our pot. All right, so I got some of my favorite uh, black gold all-purpose potting soil, filled up my container, and now I'm trying to figure out how to put my plants in the pot. And I'm gonna have this up against the wall. So I think I'm gonna start in the back of the pot with some of my taller plants and we'll work our way forward. All right, I've got everything in here and oh my goodness, my hands smell so good. And remember, when you're going by in the patio at night, make sure you kind of rough up the leaves a little bit. That's gonna get that fragrance and aroma and that's what's gonna repel the mosquitoes. Just to finish this off, I'm gonna add a handful of some of our time-release fertilizer and a little bit of sluggo as well to keep those slugs away from it. Enjoy the rest of your summer and go to baumanfarms.com for more information. Extend your growing season and escape to your own garden retreat in a Solex greenhouse from the Greenhouse Catalog. There is nothing like the taste of a bright, red, juicy, homegrown tomato. The bright, warm, durable design of a Solex greenhouse provides plenty of room to nurture your plants and enjoy your passion for years. Choose from five Solex greenhouse models or build your own with Solex panels. For all your gardening, greenhouse, and specialty growing needs, visit GreenhouseCatalog.com or give us a call. At Garland Nursery, you'll find top quality plants, four generations of garden know-how, fun and fantastic garden decor, and the best in garden supplies. Come visit us at Garland Nursery. Since 1937, inspiring beautiful and bountiful gardens. I am at the Greenhouse Catalog in Brooks, and I'm with Steve, and so Steve, you sell lots of things here, but you also sell Solex greenhouses, so that's what we're going to talk about today. And so give us a little idea about this wonderful product that is covering the greenhouses. Sure. Well, this is called Solex, and this is our twin-walled greenhouse covering, and it's insulated. Um, and if you notice, this is your typical greenhouse covering that you'd see on uh, many greenhouses across the country. And the difference between this product and our product is this is a semi-rigid greenhouse covering. So this material actually gives you a lot of opportunities to build structures that you couldn't with other greenhouse coverings. Yeah, because it's more rigid. This you really have to put on a frame that's really made for it or c conforms to it. And really this is gonna last two years, maybe three? Maybe three. And then how long will this one last? We have a 10 year warranty on Solex greenhouse covering. And so uh, if you look at the total cost of your greenhouse over a long time, this is going to really cut down your costs and increase the longevity of your greenhouse. Ah. And so I see that you have a frame here and you do sell kits, but you also sell the product separately. So are we going to put some of the product on here? So what we're going to do today is we're going to show you how to put a panel on our greenhouse kit. This is one of our greenhouse kits. We sell quite a few different greenhouse kits, um, 8x8, 8x16 feet in dimensions. And wow. then we also, we also cover industrial, uh, commercial greenhouses with this material as well, oh. very large scale greenhouses. Excellent. So we're going to be back just in a couple seconds and show you how it's done. Well, Steve, that really is a large panel. Do they all come this big? Well, you know, we actually carry Solex in a variety of options. We have uh, panels, 8x4x8 eight by by eight panels. We also have continuous rolls up to 600 feet long for really big greenhouse projects. And so is this all delivered to my house or I have to come over and pick everything up? Well, you up? can come pick it up from us or we can also ship it to you by UPS. Oh, and that's, that's one really of good. the advantages of Solex. Ah, oh, that is great. Okay, so now we have it lined up. And so what do we do now? So really the first step is you align the panel. And then the second step is you uh, just start screwing the panel All in. All right. Well, I have a drill here. And then here. we'll finish off this, uh, this panel by trimming the edge to the shape of the greenhouse. Perfect. Okay. Well, I have screws and I have a drill. Okay. 
And the instructions look a little nicer than the IKEA ones. <laughs> with the stick people. <laughs> we do have good instructions for our kids. <laughs> and we usually start with uh, do about six to eight inch spacing uh -huh. around the frame. Okay. And that'll secure the panel real tight. So okay. it'll be durable for wind and okay. snow and hail. Do you need another one? Steve, that was really pretty easy. You're not even breaking us. What? Well, you know, our greenhouse kits come with instructions. Nice. And, uh, you know, this is a good weekend project, and uh, you'll have a great, strong greenhouse. It is pretty sturdy here. I mean, it seems like it's very stable, very strong. Um, so we have weather. We have really kind of crazy weather here, so it's going to withstand all that in Oregon? It will. In fact, we have greenhouses in all 50 states. Oh, wow. We've been through hurricanes. <laughs> And uh, the twin wall covering actually gives it a lot of stiffness that you wouldn't get from another greenhouse paneling. Oh, and so that's really what gives this material the advantage from, from, a, from a building structural standpoint. Oh, that's true. So now we have that um, screwed in. So now what's next up for the side? Well, the next step is now we're just going to trim the edge of the panel. All right. Steve, that's going pretty fast and pretty easy. Yeah, so this is really uh, the next step is we'll just finish cutting this piece here. Um, and then after that, we'll go ahead and put the uh, panels on the rest of the greenhouse kit. Yeah. And so what happens when the walls go together, each sheet goes together? Uh, so we have a couple options. Um, our greenhouse kit comes with an H channel and that H channel will, uh, will merge the two pieces, the panels together in your greenhouse. Or for our larger greenhouses, we actually, uh, or a lot of uh, hobby greenhouse do-it-yourselfers, will actually overlap the panels and screw it together and that'll actually give it a lot more structural stiffness. That's great. I noticed that you have other samples of the greenhouses here, so let's go look at them. All right, let's go take a look. All right. There's really a lot of different styles of the Solix greenhouses. It's just really amazing. Yeah, so this is one of our greenhouse kits here completed. Um, one thing, we talked about the strength earlier and mm -hmm. the, the advantage of Solex covering, but what, what we didn't talk about is how great it is for plants. Ah. So this material actually diffuses the light, and so what it does is it spreads the light out through your greenhouse so the, the plant can get more light through all of the leaves in the, in the plant. And so that'll really create better tomatoes, riper tomatoes, and uh, you'll just have overall better production. That is good, because maybe even you can extend your season then of production. Yeah, you know, we have, uh, we have nice plants in here all season. That is cool. And so then how can we find you? So come check us out. We're in Salem, or you can come to uh, thegreenhousecatalog.com and check us out. Uh, well, please go to gardentime.tv. We'll click over their website. It's really a great website. There's so many different things on there, and maybe you can get a greenhouse in your backyard. Thanks so much. It was really interesting. Thank you. Congratulations, Judy, you're a winner. <laughs> well, thank you. And thank you for watching today. Now, don't forget to come out to Capital Subaru on the Parkway in Salem for Subaru Garden Days today from 11 to 3. And as always, for any more information on today's show, you can go to gardentime.tv. William and I thank you for watching, and we'll see you later today at Subaru Garden Days. Subaru Garden Days returns to Capital Subaru in Salem. Join us for a day of food, fun, and garden excitement. Select garden vendors join William and Judy on the parkway from 11 to 3. At Subaru Garden Days, June 2nd at Capital Subaru. Your way on the parkway. The proceeding was a paid program of the Gustin Creative Group and its sponsors.